this is Dr. Johnson for another round of Soups Talks. Um, before we get to our special guest today, I do have a few reminders. First of all, if you miss the online returning student registration in May, don't worry. We are going to have another opportunity for you. It's going to be July the 21st through the 28th. So mark your calendars, July 21st through July the 28th. Now, if you are a new student coming to Dayton, first of all, welcome to Dayton ISD. We're glad to have you. And that registration is going to be July the 31st through August the 4th. Again, that's July 31st through August the 4th. Now, everybody needs to grab a pen for this one. We're going to have Dayton ISD open house will be Monday, August the 7th. That Monday will be the August the 7th will be our open house. And then that Thursday, which is August the 10th, that will be the very first day of school with students. So remind that, remember those, and let's get to our special guest. Well, today I have got some wonderful guests, and we're going to talk about summer opportunities that are going on this summer that parents and students can take advantage. So I have with me Dr. Travis Young and Miss Abby Cumby first. Um, I'm going to have several guests along the way, but Dr. Young, let's start with you. Um, we've got lots of summer camps and summer school opportunities, um, so let's first start with grades three through eight. Can you tell us a little bit about that schedule? Yeah, so for summer camp, when it comes to that schedule, the students per the House Bill 4545, uh, we are required to do a summer camp, and so uh, on dates June 5th through the 9th, on Stephen F. Austin Elementary's campus and also Woodrow Wilson's campus, grades three through five and then six through eight there, uh, we will have our English language arts and reading summer camp. And again, that lasts from eight to three, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, and then also on June 12th through the 16th, uh, we will have math and that will be grades three through eight. Uh, all of our elementary summer camps will be at Stephen F. Austin and of course the junior high will all be housed at Wilson. So yeah. let me ask you this. So if my child had gone to Kimmy Brown. It didn't matter during the school year. Every elementary three through five is going to go to SFA. Is That's, that correct? That is correct. Yes, right. Everyone okay. will go to the Stephen F. Austin. Okay, very good. Now, um, if I have a child that I need to register, is it registration important to do this year? Yes, registration is very important to do this year because uh, in order to attend the summer camp, you must register. And we have those set for uh, May 30th and also May 31st. On the 30th, uh, the hours are going to be from 8 to 4, and then on May 31st, those hours are going to be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and for anyone that doesn't register, again, uh, you will not be allowed to attend because we want to make sure that we prepare and staff accordingly. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're going to the ELAR or the reading, like you said, or the math camp. Um, those are the two days that you register. Yes, those are the two days to register regardless of which one you're attending. So can my child only attend one or both uh, if needed? Yes, if needed, depending on what's, what's the circumstances, yes, they can attend both if needed or just one. Okay, so uh, what about transportation? Will there be any transportation? Yes, there will definitely be transportation. Oh, That's a great question. And even for registration, we will have the transportation department there represented so that you can fill out the paperwork at that time. And so the first day of school, those buses are ready to roll, something we're focusing in on. That's great. That's great. Now, we've talked about grades three through eight. What about high school? What do we have for them? All right, then high school is always uh, a different uh, situation as we talk about uh, because you have end of course testing which is for graduation requirements. EOC what we call. E EOC yes. is what we call them and right. so there's a review and there's also retest that we have to take and so the reviews right. are June 12th through the 15th and it's Monday through Thursday zero charge and it's free for everything on, on uh, the campuses. Now there is something that I will talk about that will cost in a little bit but also have end of course retesting or June 19th through the 22nd which is that following week and it's also Monday through Thursday. So for clarification, Dr. Young, um, I don't think we said this for three through eight. Is three through eight free also? Uh, yes, it is also oh, okay. free. Uh, due Wonderful. to the House Bill 4545 as a requirement, we want to make sure our students there. are able to attend. Right. Okay, yes, so let's go back to the high school. Put your high okay. school hat back on. So with my high school hat back on, our credit recovery, and also our early graduates, the classes that they take are from June 5th through the 29th, Monday through Thursday, but there is a $50 charge there because, again, these are 
some of the students that are wanting to be early grads are paying for their course to get them done and then those that need to recover their credits, there's also a fee for them as well. Uh, the hours when it comes to the end of course review or EOC review is 8 to 12, the AM session, and then there's a 12 to 4 PM oh, session. Oh, that's good. That gives them an opportunity to go to either or, right? Yes, yes. And we like that flexibility because, you know, you think about high school students, some of those students do work, work. and so that that's gives right. them flexibility to attend one of the sessions. Will they be able to attend uh, maybe a morning session and an afternoon if they need more than one EOC review? If they need more than one EOC review, Wonderful. yes ma'am, they will make that work. Okay. Well, yes, lots of opportunities. Thank you for that information. Yes, ma'am. Now I'm going to turn to Miss Abby Cumby. She is the Director of Multilingual Programs for us and you are also very, very busy. You have a, an opportunity for some of our little bilingual kiddos. Tell Absolutely. us about that. Well, thank you for this time. And I want to tell you a little bit about our summer enrichment program for emergent okay. bilingual students. And so these students can be bilingual students or ESL students. Okay. And it is an enrichment program, so they will receive reading and math and uh, the development of oral language. But we also try to make it really fun, and we partner with some community organizations to bring in some fun activities. Okay. So what grade level or ages are you targeting for your um, summer camp? So it'll be students who are in grades kinder and pre-k currently that are rising to kinder and first grade. Very good. Now you talked a little bit about your partnership with the Jones yes. Public Library. Now you've been doing that for some while. We've been doing this for six years. We're very wow. proud of that partnership. And uh, Sydney Jones and Sherry Sykes from the, uh, the Jones Public Library have been fabulous with us. You know, I was in there the other day and they were bragging about y'all. So oh. oh, thank you for that partnership. That's well, wonderful. Well, absolutely. And it's free of charge. And and we bus our students over there one day a week. They have a bilingual summer school, uh, some uh, reading time, oh, wow. and they have a bilingual book. They do songs. They have crafts. They do a game. The children look forward to it every week, and it's great. So, you know, I love our partnership with the Jones Public Library, but, you know, there's a lot of things out there for everybody at all ages. Do you yes. know a little bit about what they're offering this summer at the Jones Public Library? I do, I do, and they are targeting every age group from toddler all the way up to adult, so you too can join in the fun. Yes, you okay. can. They have fabulous prizes and they have parties and special events. And so I don't want to make sure I want to make sure I get this right. Beginning uh, June 26th through July 7th, they will have registration. Oh, wow. And then their summer reading program actually starts on July 3rd, and then it will culminate with a fantastic party on July 29th. Wow. So they've got lots of fun activities and prizes. Okay, so it doesn't matter if they're going to the Jones Public Library or they're going to our summer camps, registra registration, registration, registration is yes, the key, right? The key. Absolutely. Okay, Very so cool. that better planning can happen, yes. right? And I do want to mention that both the summer reading program and our bilingual enrichment program are free. Okay. So they Very get transportation, good. all of it's free. Okay. And what are those dates? One more time. Uh, for our bilingual summer yes, school, it'll be June 5th to June 23rd, Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 p.m. And, and how do they register? Is it the same way that we've they already started registration? We Perfect. have attended every kindergarten um, graduation. Uh, all the teachers have sent home flyers Ooh, with QR busy. codes, and we actually have a contest going on to see how many we can register. All right, so very good. registration is still open. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Young. Right. Thank you, Miss Cumby. We appreciate you, you giving us all the things that are going on, but we're not finished yet, so stay tuned. I have two more young ladies, and I say that because I talk both of them. Um, they're here today to talk more opportunities that our students and our parents can maybe get in to, right, this yes. summer? Okay, so I have Miss Roxy Asbill and Miss Joni Thrift. They are our district curriculum coordinators, and Roxy, I believe you're the ELA yes, arm, or the reading, and you are the math. Yes. Okay, so um, we're going to get started, and I'm going to ask you, Ms. Asbill, um, you're bringing some information about a thing called choice boards. What is that? Our choice boards are one-page documents with nine fun educational activities on each page, 
And the idea is that the students get to select the task that they want to work on for the day. So they can, they don't have to do all nine. They can say, I want to do this one or I want to do that one. Exactly, yes. Okay, so it's their choice. That's right. Okay, and, and what are the subject areas that they will have? Every kindergarten through fifth grade student will get to choose between reading and math. Okay, very good. All right, and um, Ms. Thrift, um, how will parents be able to find these choice boards? Where do we find them? There's a link on our district website, uh, and we will also be sending out an email with that link and further instructions. Students will simply click on the link, and then they will choose their appropriate grade and subject to access the choice boards. So if I were, I was really ambitious, and I was in third grade, maybe, yes. and um, I wanted to do a fourth grade choice board, is that, a, is that doable? Absolutely. Okay. Well, all right, give me a brief example, Ms. Asbill, of an ELAR or a reading choice board. Can you give, that, give us an example? Please? I can. So one of my favorites is for students to select a virtual field trip. They can oh, wow. pick places like the Johnson Space Center, the San Diego Zoo, Ancient Egypt, wow. and they visit the place via a virtual field trip and then students write a journal entry over their experience. So if I have parents that are working or we're not able to go anywhere for the summer, that, what a wonderful way right. to travel through virtual yes. and field even, trips. Yes, and even yeah. parents that are taking kids on vacation, we're not probably going to go to seven or eight places, but it's a way to just diversify how many places. That is visit. awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so Ms. Thrift, what about you? Can you give us some examples of some choice boards or what you would suggest for parents and of course for kids? Definitely, yes. One of the things that um, will be on every grade's choice board is ST Math, uh, one of the programs we love because it is conceptual understanding through puzzles uh, where you have visuals to show what you understand and learn about mathematics. Uh, we're actually doing an incentive with this one so that if students are able to do the recommended number of minutes each week throughout the summer, oh. then there will be a reward when we return to school for oh, those individuals. I like that. I like that. Do we know what the reward is yet? Uh, it's kind of varied. Is, so is it we'll, secret right it's now? It's secret right now. Okay, so make sure you do it. That's awesome. That's right. We also have, uh, for some individual fun skill practice, uh, we have some interactive games through Tang Math. Oh, wow. um, but there's also family fun with hands-on. If you want to play with a sibling or a parent, there are some games that will be sent as well um, that can be done with any materials at home. So that's awesome. So um, one thing, y'all kind of just made me think about this. You know, your kids are going to be on their phones. They're going to be on their devices. Why not make it educational and fun, right? Exactly. All right. Okay. Anything else you would like to add, Ms. Asbill? That's it. We just hope that the kids have fun doing the activities and stay engaged and um, keep reading throughout the summer. Absolutely. What about you, Ms. Thrift? Anything else? Oh, definitely. We know that we will um, minimize the learning gaps if we can just get kids to do a little bit of math and reading uh, each week throughout the summer. I think that's awesome. So, you've got lots of opportunities, parents and students, so let's take advantage of them. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Now I have two more exciting guests. Um, I have Ms. Shanna McCracken, who is our direct executive director of curriculum and instruction, and I also have Ms. Alicia Wood, who is an instructional coach, math instructional coach at SFA. So welcome, ladies. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for having us. Yes, I mean, we're talking. I started out talking about some of the summer opportunities that our parents and our students can have. And so I'm going to start with you, Ms. McCracken, awesome. if that's okay. Yes. Um, you gave out something called Books for Broncos. What, right. what is that? Books for Broncos is, a, is an amazing program. This is our fourth year to be able to send home 
free books to all of our pre-K through fifth grade students and then for those who are interested at sixth through eighth grade. That's awesome. These are books that our students can take home and keep in their personal collection. They, they don't, don't have, have to bring, bring them back. They do not have to bring them back. Wow. And this is the fourth year for that. This is our fourth year in this partnership. That is awesome. So how many books do the kiddos get? Depending on grade level and the quantities that were available, okay. as many as up to three per student. Wow. That's yes. awesome. And this is our fourth year. This is our fourth year. Um, this is in a partnership with Book Buddies of East Texas, which is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put books in the hands of students over the summer to support literacy. And awesome. they love donating to Dayton ISD, and we love, and we love that. We love getting Absolutely. the donations. It's, it's a team effort. Our maintenance crew has to send a truck and a trailer to their warehouse. We pick oh, wow. up pallets of boxes. Wow. We bring them back. We've even had football players help us unpack and unload oh, pallets goodness. before our maintenance team uh, delivers them to campuses. And then I know our instructional coaches and other campus staff were involved in getting them spread around on the campus so that the students can shop and select their oh, books. Well, so they could, just, they could just select their own books. They select their own that's, books. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so parents make sure that they're reading their books, that's okay? Right. Okay, now there is also something that you brought along with you. Can you yes. tell me what this is? This is a kit of decodable readers. Um, this kit is going home with every current pre-K kindergarten and first grade student wow. in Dayton ISD. These books start with very low level decodable readers. Um, there's also a QR code for easy scanning with uh, quick and simple video directions on how to use it. There is a parent guide and lesson manual so the parents oh, know exactly how to use these books. But these books will help even our earliest readers continue to read and grow over the summer. And so these range from, like I said, pre-K all the way through our current first graders. Wow. So don't be alarmed if your student isn't quite at any certain level yet. They'll progress. They will progress. progress. And some of these books might be a little on the too easy end or a little on the too challenging. But, but if you practice, 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 and find what's just right for your reader. You know, I'm looking at this, and I don't know if, I don't know if you can see this out there, but they have sight words and then new words yes. for the kids. I love this. Thank you. And, and where did we get this? This came uh, from a grant through um, TEA. It's called T-Class. It's Texas COVID Learning Assistance Support. So wow. this came as a grant, and we are so thrilled to be able to send it home to our elementary students. Okay, so I have uh, several parents that have reached out to me, and um, they have asked me the question, we want our kids to read. You know, Dr. J is always saying, read, 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 and read some more. So, um, do you have any reading suggestions yes. that for parents? Yes, we have amazing librarians in Dayton. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, they we do. have curated a list pre K all the way through uh, 12th grade, wow. grade level bands of books, their recommendations, newest releases, classic favorites. That list is posted on our website. Oh, good. So it's just a click away. And I encourage you to browse for your student and browse for yourself. See ah. what you can find on that list to well, read. Well, you know, Ms. Cumby and I were talking about the, the partnership with Jones Public Library. Yes. And so with the reading suggestions, I bet they have a lot of those books, too. I'm sure they do. Wonderful. Sure they do. Wonderful. Okay. All right, Ms. Wood. <laughs> now, you are doing something that, again, this is not your first rodeo this no. summer. A thing called Camp Invention. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about it. So Camp Invention is a summer enrichment program that Dayton ISD brought on six years ago, I think, is wow. when we started it. Wow, has um, it been that long? I believe so, wow. yes. So we did have a little break with COVID and everything, but then we picked it back up. So it is designed for children that are entering kindergarten through sixth grade. There are opportunities for junior high and high school students as well, but they are not campers. Uh, it is a week-long program that focuses on fostering creativity, innovation, and problem-solving skills. Oh, I love that. Yes, through lots of hands-on activities and challenges and then four different modules that the camp hosts. Um, it is organized by the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Wow. Uh, so it's a partnership with Dayton ISD. 
and they aim to inspire young minds to explore science, technology, engineering, and math. Or and what do we STEM call that? STEM, that's yes. right. Yes. Um, so during the camp invention, children participate in a variety of activities, and this year they are doing a mimic bot, so they're going to be creating a robot. They're going to be designing wow. a skate park for a oh, skateboard. Sweet. Mm -hmm. They get to create a pop-up business venture, and then they are also going to become event planners and oh, make well, a I celebration. Oh, I need some of those. <laughs> <laughs> so they they do all four modules every day, and they build through the week. On That's those awesome. Different things. Do you have something at the the very last day for parents? So we are bringing back our Parent Expo. I am so yes, glad. We kind of um, stopped that because of COVID, didn't Yes, we? so if we have campers that started with us, or even in the first couple of years, we have had parents asking over the past couple of years, yes. you know, why can't we come anymore? Um, but So we are bringing back the Parent Expo this year, and Love it is that. on the last day of camp. The kiddos come in that morning, and they finish up their projects and activities from throughout the week, and we display them and then the parents come in that afternoon and they get to see what the kids have been working on all week and they get to look at their projects and then the kids get to take home all of their oh, wow. creations. Wow, okay, now tell me what was the week, the date? It is June 5th through 9th okay. and it will be housed at Stephen F. Austin Elementary this year. Where, where the summer camp is going to be yes, also. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so um, we, do we are able to take advantage of the child feeding program that we have this summer so they get to eat in the cafeteria also and then yeah it's from 9 to 3:30 okay right, so um, you mentioned the the summer reading i mean the summer feeding program and and just so you know we are going to be hosting that all of June at SFA and at Woodrow Wilson Junior High and any child from 2 years of age to 18 years it doesn't have to be a Dayton ISD student right and they will get free breakfast and free lunch. Mm -hmm. So come on out for camp, mm -hmm. come out out and, and read, come on out and get fed. One last question yes. for you. So if I have a parent that's out there who says, I want to sign my child up, how do they do that? So they can go to invent.org and there is a button that says find a camp near me. So you just click on that, enter our zip code, we will be the first one that pulls up and then you just go through the motions register online uh, for camp invention and if you do want to sign up we are looking for more campers we are always welcoming more campers how many do we have right now we currently have 52 which well, that's is a, a fantastic good start, number but we want more yes we want more we had 62 last year so i would like to at, at least, least meet that, that if not yes. beat that um, but I do have a code. If you enter the code LOVE30 on your registration, you can save $30. And what was that code again? LOVE30. LOVE30. L-O-V-E-3-0. I love it. Okay. Love, love, love it. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. I think thank we've you. got some wonderful things and suggestions for you to keep your kiddos busy. So, join us. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's guest. And look at all the wonderful summer opportunities that both you and your children have. So thank you for listening today. Now remember, monitor your kiddos' social media and encourage them to read. Read, read. Play some board games. Just take some time to have some fun together. You know, you blink and they're going to be graduating soon. So enjoy your time together. Congratulations one last time to the class of 2023. This is Dr. J. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed, and safe summer.